Hey everybody, it's Glenn, back in this video with the Marvel Legends Ant-Man series Tiger Shark. Or more appropriately, Marvel's Tiger Shark. The prefix Marvel's used perhaps to avoid actual Tiger Sharks banding together in a class action lawsuit against Marvel for using their species name. Looking at the packaging back, and this is the Ultron Builder Figure Collection, the series comprising of Movie Ant-Man, Wasp, Bulldozer, Tiger Shark as we have here, Grim Reaper, and Giant Man. Tiger Shark Shark first appeared in Prince Namor the Submariner number 5 way back in 1968, but delving slightly deeper into the character, the brief bio on the packaging back reads, After the accident, champion swimmer Todd Arliss became a savage razor-toothed predator. Now they say the accident, as if it's as infamous as Peter Parker being bitten by a radioactive spider, but no. Here he is out of packaging and the accident being referred to was him seeking public acclaim by trying to rescue a drowning man, only for waves to beat his body against a ship, snapping his spine. He then submits to an experiment in which he's treated with shark DNA. Now sharks do have some spinal cord regenerative capability, so it's not as wacky as it sounds, and the origin may have been inspired by news of real world research, but this is the Marvel Universe, so in addition to curing his paralysis, he of course becomes a human shark hybrid. Of course Tiger Shark joins a growing line of Marvel Legends on the Hyperion body. It's super beefy, and from reviewing the various iterations of it, I get the impression I like it more than most seem to. And of all of these, Tiger Shark shares most with the Wolverine Puck Bath series Sabretooth. Not just both as savage predators, but in addition to the bodies, they also have the same clawed hands, and we'll leave them to play patty cake that I'm sure will end in blood and tears. Tiger Shark is probably in the shadow of Bulldozer from this line, who we've waited an age for to complete our wrecking crews, yet Tiger Shark is himself one of Hasbro's missing children. Those legends revealed only to not be released until now. And as a member of the Masters of Evil, he can help fill out the roster of villains in a collection. Further still, with Hasbro revealing a forthcoming Namor at their panel at SDCC, picking up Tiger Shark is a good way to preempt that Namor with one of his foes. Commonly in the character design, he does have spikes on his arms and this jagged trim running along the outside of his legs. That's absent on this figure, yet I have seen comic art where it is absent, so perhaps for a single issue a comic artist forgot to draw those bits, providing Hasbro with a loophole not to cough up and render them. Now taking a closer look, and he has a ferocious expression, might be a bit too exaggerated for some tastes, but to me in its exaggeration it speaks of the broadness of Tiger Shark's villainy. In the comics his fin is part of the character character's costume, although more recently in the comics he has mutated even further, growing an actual fin. Yet my favourite aspect of this tiger shark is that fin. It has a subtle surface texture to it. It's not immediately obvious, but it does show a level of consideration by Hasbro that surprised me. Alas, as I often find with Hasbro's legends, they give with one hand and take away with the other. Because the careful consideration I noted with that fin is negated by the carelessness of the deco. While the orange of the arms and legs is the orange of the plastic, yet on the torso the orange is painted, and when I say painted, I mean barely. It's got poor coverage and is patchy, not matching the orange of the plastic. This is something I touched upon in the review of the Giant Man from this series, but here it's worse and the deco is approaching the level of quality of the dreaded Toys R Us exclusive all new X-Men box set. Who wants that? Now looking at the head, it rotates, albeit the range inhibited by the fin. Then the head can look down a real decent amount, but it isn't able to look up again owing to the fin. In the comic, the fin does attach to the costume down the back. So while on the figure it does still limit articulation, Hasbro have modified the design to allow for some posability of the head. For the shoulder, the arm rotates and moves up this far. There's upper arm rotation, then a double jointed elbow. Rotation at the wrist, then a wrist hinge, moving the hand down and up. Rotation at the waist, then an ab crunch, which moves a real decent amount forward and back. At the hips, the legs move out to the side. They then move this far forward, but not so much back. There's upper leg rotation, then a double jointed knee. Lower leg rotation, and at the ankle, it's hinge moving the foot back and forwards. Plus an ankle rocker pivot that I love. And taking advantage of that pivot, this is the figure pose that is widest stance possible, still with both feet flat on the floor. So all things considered, and that torso deco is really 
troubling and hard to overlook. I just wish Hasbro would take that extra step. But as it is, much of what they do with this line is a case of so close yet so far. And I watch interviews with Hasbro staff at SDCC. They mention their tight budgets. Yeah, I can't really feel sorry for a mega corporation that's making money hand over fist. What about our budgets as collectors? Sometimes I just want a bigger reward for choosing to spend that budget with them. So I'd probably say Tiger Shark is a skip, but to his fortune, he gets a buy simply by following probably the worst toy I've ever reviewed. Click the video on the right to see that. As ever, I sure would appreciate it if you could give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.